I'm delighted to welcome Jackie Doyle Price, the new industry minister to uh, manufacturing TV. Congratulations, Minister, on your new appointment. Thank you very much. You must be very pleased. I'm very pleased. I'm hugely excited, actually. I, th I think I've got the best brief in government um, because there's so so much good news to celebrate uh, in manufacturing. And, you know, frankly, I've always believed in British being best and buying British and everything made in Britain uh, should be championed. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Well, you were born in Sheffield, so you obviously have some manufacturing somewhere in your blood. What experience have you had of the sector? So, well, you are right. You know, I, I was born and bred in Sheffield. So, you know, I, you know, I grew up in the steel city at a time when it was actually facing quite considerable challenge. Uh, but also my constituency of Thurrock is also quite a big manufacturing centre. We've got such brands like Unilever, Procter & Gamble here. And in many respects, although Thurrock is in the south of England, it has many of the hallmarks of a northern industrial town. So, you know, that's I, I've always been a big believer in it. it. It's one of the things that's always frustrated me is that there's so many people, particularly in London, the South East, who think, you know, manufacturing is part of our past. Well, it is part of our past, but it's part of our future too. It is absolutely part of our heritage. It's part of what made Britain great in the past, but it is part of our future as well and it will be generating and continue to generate uh, growth and wealth and you know this is a government which believes very strongly in achieving growth and championing wealth creation and i am absolutely determined that manufacturing needs to keep its part of that agenda you've got some very positive news to announce uh, let let us in on it because uh, you're making some big announcements today Yes, absolutely. Well, we obviously want uh, our industry to remain as competitive as pos possible. It needs to be at the front end of, of embracing technology that will make it more productive. So so with the announcement, we're making £40 million uh, to uh, award to particular projects that are designed to do exactly that. And it's all about how we embrace new technologies to make our industries more efficient. And I think schemes like this run by government just give that added push to bring uh, companies together to actually collaborate and, and achieve these things and embrace those opportunities. Because, we you know, quite often we're dealing with very established brands that are very effective and they've done things a particular way for a long time. It becomes quite a big, brave leap to adopt new technology. It's not it's not a small thing. And, and I view the role of government really to, to do its bit to enable that. And that's what this fund is all about. And there's some really exciting uh, projects that we're funding. Uh, in particular, one I'm, I'm particularly excited about is one that's uh, uh, enabling a bakery to become more efficient because I'm, naturally I will gravitate to things that involve consuming nice edible products. But there we are. <laughs> but there are some amazing projects and, uh, and uh, I look forward to doing more of this uh, in time. Well, you, you obviously evidence support for the Made Smarter Fund there, and uh, that came as a result of the industrial strategy of 2017. That was scrapped in 2019, and we haven't heard anything about the IS in BEIS, Bayes, since then. Are you going to put together some kind of industrial strategy? Labour's got one. What about this government? I, I Again, it comes back to, you know, what is the role of government in this? And, you know, I, I very much view our role as being championing what's good, encouraging, uh, you know, industries to embrace the things that will make them better and more effective. And I don't, I don't really like the term <laughs> in, in, in strategy. I think, you know, we need to be, it's much more of a partnership approach rather than a planned one, if you follow me. So one of the things that we're working on at the moment um, is the Manufacturing Investment Prospectus, which really just captures exactly what support government can do and, and a vision uh, for, for the success uh, across across the piece. But, it, but it's, it's less about delivery against the plan, which, which frankly, I, you know, it doesn't suit my politics. It all feels a bit, you know, back to Stalinist type <laughs> grand plans, whereas actually that's not the relationship we want with industry it, it, we want to be one of partnership and and encouragement rather than centrally government uh, organized plans well I, I think just to be fair to labor i don't think that that's what they're recommending they're, it's, it's they're actually, talking about partnership it's as more well about language though i think i think it's i mean it, it is it is very much more about language and I, and i think you know 
we are part we are part of a changing right you know things change very very quickly and 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 that kind of partnership which is which is more led by industry than by government i think and that's when when you start talking about strategies it doesn't quite convey that okay well uh, the semantics we'll put that to one side looking ahead as uh, you suggested we do there are some really tough times for manufacturers external shocks it's reflected in the fact that the PMI, uh, the Purchasing Managers Index, is below 50 for the third month in a row, and that's not good news. There are 95,000 very highly paid vacancies in the sector with no promise necessarily that they're going to be filled quickly. That's about an £8 billion hit to output. Uh, there's a lot for you to untangle. It feels like the economy is slightly unbalanced. Where are you going to start? Well, you are right, actually. I mean, you couldn't be more right. We we are facing a huge challenge uh, at the moment. And you, you, you quite correctly point to the skills uh, issue. I mean, we're, we're very good at creating jobs at, at minimum wage. We're quite good at having filling the jobs at the top. But that, that journey between the two and, and equipping people with the skills that actually our industry needs, we've still never got that right, in truth. Uh, and and that's because actually you know department the, these things sit with the department for education and it focuses on education more than skills. That's something that we have really got to grapple with, and that's that's very uh, high uh, on on my agenda. I also think there's a there's a broader issue as well in that you know having had the pandemic, uh, you know, and that was challenging uh, for for many businesses. So we're now facing a situation where, you know, as you as you pointed out, you know, there's increased costs, uh, not just on energy, but the knock-ons of that uh, are quite significant. And having come out of the pandemic, of course, many of these businesses aren't especially battle fit to deal with it, which is why, you know, what we do in government is so, so important. It's why we need to have that dialogue and making sure that we're doing everything we can to, to help uh, businesses succeed, including getting stuff out of the way. Uh, for them, um, but I and, I and I think that's really the message um, I would like to convey to, to to your viewers is you know I don't pretend to have all the answers, but I do care and and I really do have enthusiasm for this brief, and I really want to hear directly from businesses about what it is that I can usefully do to help them, um, and that will include actually shaking up some of my fellow ministers in other departments and, and actually yes department for education is top of the list well that will come as welcome news and i'll get on to uh, channels of communication in a moment but just talking about the industrial sector stability is vital to investment i mean we're talking about 10-year roi cycles investment has been very low business gets it in the neck for not investing but for the last few years We've had multiple prime ministers, umpteen chancellors, umpteen business secretaries, and not to mention half a dozen changes to tax policy like the annual investment allowance. I think there have been six changes to that. When it comes to pinning responsibility for low investment, shouldn't you guys, the politicians, take some of the blame? Uh, I, I think short-termism is a big problem in, in politics, and, and, I, and I, I have no doubt it does actually make... Uh, make businesses reticent about committing to things that you know ultimately we're talking about a very long period for investments to pay i get that completely uh, and there is no doubt actually that I mean, I mean it's really the last six years where we've had that turbulence that the turbulence of leaving the european union and what flowed from that has generated uncertainty there's, there's no doubt about it what we need to do is make sure that we are getting ace you know the, the the legal frameworks right so that so that everyone can be confident that there is certainty and 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 that things will will progress as intended but yeah i mean you are right sometimes there are massively strategic uh changes which can impact uh you know if we look at big policy initiatives and companies really need to be certain that those are going to last before committing to them and uh, we need to make sure that we're doing everything to give that that security and in that sense you know i mean we can talk about potential political changes and leadership changes but ultimately i think everybody involved in politics whatever color party they are whatever part of the conservative party they're from we all actually want to have the best possible outcomes for our businesses and 
because and, and what flows from that the best possible job opportunities for our constituents so you know i think providing we've got the right systems of dialogue and government is genuinely responding to the representations that that you are all making uh, then we get to the right place okay well le leveling up and regional growth that growth are part of your portfolio uh, next year, I believe it is, EU funding via the ERDF, ERDF, the European Regional Development Fund, that finishes. Um, what you've proposed with your shared prosperity fund is only about 57% of that. Where's the rest coming from? Generally, our approach to this is, is to, to essentially manage, you know, create a new way of making sure that we're achieving levelling up. And it, it's about joining up all aspects of, of government policy, uh, you know, overseen by DLUC, but obviously there are other, uh, other, other players uh, in it. And really, we, we want the mechanisms so that those communities are actually driving those improvements themselves. I mean, there wasn't actually much opportunity for communities to get involved in ERDF funding so much. The What we're, what we're proposing through DLUC's levelling up programme is something much wider and much more bottom up so that everyone can get involved in in making the best for their communities. I should say that a chum of mine, uh, knowing that we're going to be chatting, um, said it does appear that government focuses on traditional manufacturing areas, obviously North West, Midlands and so on. She's from the South West. She says there's a lot of manufacturing down there, but government only ever says, oh, well, they do tourism down there. They don't do manufacturing. So when it comes to regional policy, growth, industrial um, uh, relations, sorry, not relations, but you know, your relations with manufacturers, can you promise that you'll take a look at these other regions as a holistic view, not just the obvious manufacturing regions of the UK? Absolutely. I absolutely uh, promise that. I, it's a it's a criticism I've heard numerous times. Obviously, my constituencies in the south of England. Uh, I've spoke to many uh, business representatives who think that all this money is just going off to the north, and you know what people perceive as being the great Victorian manufacturing centres of the past. That's not the case at all. And I think we we actually need to do better to make sure that everyone understands what we mean by levelling up. And you know, within that, there are particular communities. Yeah, you know, there. You know, you know, London is the richest city in the country, but it also has pockets of deprivation. Those places shouldn't be ruled out either, where they've got projects that actually meet our criteria. And I'd also say, I think we 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 need to really be I mean, part of the part of the reason that we're doing this manufacturing investment prospectus is very much to do what your friend suggested, which is to highlight that actually manufacturing is everywhere in the UK. It's not just in the north of England. And there's some great brands and, and great businesses doing, you know, hugely significant things in places where you wouldn't necessarily expect to see them. So, so watch this space. <laughs> OK, final point. We talked about communication with the sector. I don't know if you know it, but there's um, there's a campaign for a dedicated minister for manufacturing. And it's coming from SMEs, which 99% of manufacturers are, are SMEs uh, with 250 employees or less. And they feel unheard, <clears throat> unrecognised, um, not taken into account. Uh, and they're looking, as I say, for this manufacturer for manu sorry, Minister for Manufacturing. That is you. That is me. Are you the hero they're looking for? Well, I, I want to be. I, genuinely, I want to be. And... Um... You know, I think the important thing is one of the things that concerns me um, is that there are some businesses that are very well networked in Whitehall because they're big enough and they can employ resource to do that. But actually, for most businesses, they aren't. Uh, then they rely on their trade associations to do that job for them. And that, that's that's all well and good. Uh, we have some good relationships with them. But, you know, I do actually want to get really down in a more granular way to have dialogue with businesses and uh, well I'll, I'll, I'll send the message out to them through you if you don't mind Nick if if any of you would like me to come and visit you please send in an invitation we'll, we'll definitely look I want to go all over the country I want to see every every kind of sector and I want to hear from you about where government's getting in your way <laughs> and, and what more we can do to champion you and give that support so so please write in
Okay, well, Jackie Doyle Price, thank you. Let's keep the conversation going. Let's keep the channels of communication open. Excellent. It's been a great pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. This has been a special report from Manufacturing TV. I'm Nick Peters. Thanks for watching.